So I have a novel about to come out. It's about a technology that allows data to be inputted and outputted from the human brain. Of course, you've all seen this before. You've seen it in science fiction. What I'm here to tell you is that that science fiction is rapidly being transformed into science fact. Indeed, we've been manipulating data in the human brain since the 1960s, when this scientist, Jose Delgado, implanted remote-controlled electrodes in the brain of this brave bull in a bullring. And you can see the bull is getting aggressive, moving towards him, but Delgado flips a single switch on his remote control, and that aggressive bull is quickly pacified. Now, that's pretty creepy, but it demonstrates the power of electrical interface with the brain, and that technology went on to have medical impa impacts that were very important. So in the 1970s, we got the cochlear implant. For people who are profoundly deaf, no hearing aid can help them. But the cochlear implant doesn't just amplify sound. Instead, it picks up sound, transforms it with an algorithm, and turns it into electrical impulses that go into the auditory nerve and into the brain and make the brain imagine that it's picking up sound. And that means that more than 100,000 people, like this four-year-old girl, hearing the first sound she's ever heard in her life, are now able to overcome deafness. Now, that's data input. We've also pulled data out of the brain. The man on the next slide is named Johnny Ray. He suffered a massive stroke that left him paralyzed from the neck down, unable to speak, only able to blink. But in the first of its kind operation, a single implant was placed in his motor cortex, the part of his brain that controlled his hand. And that allowed him to think about and effectively use a cursor on a computer screen to move around to type out messages to his friends and family. It was a crude interface, but a quantum leap beyond blinking once for yes and twice for no. Now, we've also interfaced with the sense that most of us think about most, which is our vision. Jens Baumann was rendered blind by an accident when he was 19 years old, but his vision was restored decades later through this interface, a digital camera, a CCD on his eyeglasses. Its imagery goes to a small computer that then is pumped up as impulses into this jack in the back of his skull that sends data into his primary visual cortex. I know, right? So he can see. Now, the brain is more than just sensation. There's higher functions like memory. In the film Memento, Guy Pearce played Lenny, a man who was unable to form new long-term memories. And cases like this do actually occur, and many that are a bit milder. So to try to rectify these, scientists have worked on building chips that can replace the part of the brain that's damaged in these cases, the hippocampus. And what they found is that when they implant these chips into rats that have a damaged hippocampus, they can restore the ability to form memory, and they can improve it. The rats can remember better. They can learn better. And now we're taking that beyond just memory and into decision-making, performance on animal IQ tests, if you will. These monkeys have had their performance on monkey IQ tests impaired by repeated uses of cocaine. <laughs> and scientists with a the addition of a small chip in the frontal cortex have demonstrated that they can restore decision-making ability even when these monkeys have been dosed, and they can improve it. So the monkeys can now get scores on the tests better than any monkey before ever has, leading to the possibility of the cyborg Planet of the Apes. Now, for most of us, computers are not about solo work. They're about communication. They've really enhanced our lives by allowing us to send ideas and thoughts and feelings from one person to another. And that's no exception for this technology. In fact, DARPA is very interested in what they call enhanced battlefield communication between soldiers. So they funded this study where the auditory cortices of two capuchin monkeys were linked via electrodes when they were in separate rooms. And they showed that they could play a sound for the monkey on the left, and the monkey on the right could hear the sound and identify what it was. And now we're getting close to doing this with vision, even in humans. The image on the left is an image that's been played for a human being in an MRI machine. The image on the right is what a computer algorithm has reconstructed, not by looking at the image, but by looking at the person's brain activity. It's a crude image, but we're getting there bit by bit. And of course, the next frontier is taking those hippocampal prostheses and connecting them, allowing for the possibility of exchanging ideas, memories, thoughts, experiences, even skills. Now, 
I don't want to mislead you. This technology is far from ready for deployment. There are big hurdles. Jens, the blind man, he sees in a 16 by 16 pixel grid. It's not that great, but it's better than nothing. Brain surgery is a lot to go through, and we're not going to go through it lightly unless there are huge advantages. But the bigger questions, I think, are about the consequences of this technology. If you have an implant in your head, can it crash? Can it be hacked? Can you get a virus? And who controls it? Is this going to be a bottoms-up, peer-to-peer thing, or a top-down control in a Big Brother-like situation? So those are the questions that I try to tackle in my novel. If technology can link to your brain and link each other, who gets to control? Who gets to choose? I hope you'll check it out, and thank you very much.